we kind of get an idea of the overhead of just adding one of these cycle counters. And so in the first loop, there is no cycle counter inside of the loop. In the second loop, there is a cycle counter. This is loop one, this is loop two. They're effectively the same loop in terms of their operations. But the one that did the individual captures here got ballooned up because there is some tiny overhead that adds up and makes it significant. So just the act of measuring something has some cost inherently in it. So what does it look like when a blueprint is actually taking up a performance issue? So I made this little cone here, and inside the cone I have on begin play, sets a timer, gives me some time to enable stat events or whatever, and then it does this my slow BP event, and there's some delays, and then it runs this run slow operation function that I've written in C++, and it does it uh, three times, and then it calls done for print stream. So if you look at that in C++, all it's doing is starting a scope counter at the top level of the function, so this will cover the entire function, and then we have a loop of about 100,000, so we do we loop 100,000 times, and each time we just add up a sum of an index modulus 3. And so in the first loop, there is no cycle counter inside of the loop, as commented out. In the second loop, there is a cycle counter inside of the loop, so we can kind of get an idea of the overhead of just adding one of these cycle counters. And so this, these are clearly denoted by top level only, meaning there's nothing inside of this, it's only the top level scope. And this individual scopes, meaning inside of each individual iteration of this loop, we have another scope marker. And so I've ran this in the editor and in the development standalone. So if we look at the editor one, and I searched for these, we can find the run slow operation. And if I zoom in on these, we can see that it's world tick time blueprint latent actions. So this is our timer. And then it says it's running the uber graft of test perf actor, which if we go back to the editor, that is this actor here, test perf actor. And we're in the event graph or the uber graph, I suppose. And the latent action is this timer. So if we hop back over here, you can see the run slow operation. We don't see that blueprint event here, but we do see run slow operation. So we can find that in code and we could go look at this latent action for the uber graph of test perf actor. So we would get pointed at the blueprint if, if needed. Hey, quick correction. We have a timer that calls an event and then runs the slow operation. Before I had a delay right here, which made the scopes look a little bit differently. So I've deleted that delay, set and ran another capture. And so we have a slow event that prints a string and then runs the slow operation. Then we delay, which is the latent action, prints a string and runs it again. And so if we hop over to the test, we can see the first time it, we have a timer manager and then this my slow BP event, which is the blueprint event that is problematic and slow. And we can see here we have our runs operation and we have the first loop and second loop. This is captured in the editor. If I go to the next one, you can see that this is under the blueprint latent actions and then we run the slow operation. So we're still pointed to the actor, but it's in the uber graph. But this is related to the delay, whereas the other one, the timer, will have the timer manager in the scope stack. We have this run slow operation and that took 10 milliseconds. We can see our print strings right here. But what's important to note is right here, if we stop highlighting this event, this is run slow operation top level only. So this was the code that is this associated with this. There's no scope counter in here. It's the same number, my max, which is 100,000. And if we look over here, that took 585 microseconds. The same thing where we had individual scope counters inside of it. If we zoom in, we can see all the little scope counters. The same thing with the individual scope counters took 9.9 .9 milliseconds. So this is microseconds and milliseconds. This is basically half of a millisecond. This is like 10 milliseconds. So there's a huge overhead potentially in using these scope counters. And if you do them too frequently, well, you're basically going to make it look slower than it is. And so you have to be kind of careful with how the how you use these scope counters and how often you use them. If we take a look at the test from the development build, we can see that the top level only only took 136 microseconds, whereas the one that had the individual ones took 16 milliseconds. It also has the same issue. It, it is faster. This is one tenth of a millisecond, and this is 16 milliseconds. So this is basically taking up one frame of a 60 frames per second. The individual scopes do add to it. So we see similar performance in the editor build and the development build in this case. So the editor was actually faster for some reason in terms of the individual scopes, and but it's slower when we didn't have the individual scopes. So don't read too much into this. This is just some really loose napkin math to show what the overhead is of adding a scope counter. And so there's a lot of variables here. This could be completely off basis. 
and I didn't do a lot of redundancy tests. I only ran the test three times, and this is just one sample. So this is a very, very rough approximation, but it is kind of insightful. So just the act of measuring something has some cost inherently, and it's pretty low, but it is something and it adds up. And so we have the two tests here, the scope overhead in the editor and the scope overhead in development. So this top row is just me running the test in the editor. This bottom row is just me running the test in a standalone development client. So we did this many iterations, 100,000 iterations. So in the editor one, we had 0.59 milliseconds to do the top level scope that had no individual scopes within it. So this is just the loop. We just timed the loop and that's it. When we timed the loop and each scope marker within it, it took about 10 microseconds. So this has been rounded, but basically the formula was what was the total time that it took us to do the scope with the individual ones? And I subtract out the time for the scope it took for just the loop. Since these are the same, I hope that removes everything except for the individual scopes. Now, that might be a bad assumption, but take that out by subtracting it, and then we divide it by the number of iterations. Now, this is a really small number in milliseconds. It's basically zero, so I multiply it by 1,000 to get it into microseconds. And so what we look at here is that we got 0.09 microseconds. So this is a very tiny in the editor. And the same calculation, but with this data, the development client standalone, we get 0.159 microseconds per scope marker. So this is a very tiny, like it's not even a whole microsecond, but there is some overhead associated with these. And again, this is very rough napkin math, like the fact that the development client standalone had longer scope timers than the editor is suspect to me, but nevertheless, this does show you that the overhead is pretty small, but it is significant and can add up. Again, just to hit that point home, here's the whole thing. This is loop one, this is loop two. They're effectively the same loop in terms of their operations. But the one that did the individual captures here got ballooned up because there is some tiny overhead that adds up and makes it significant. So while the overhead is small, you just need to be aware that there's something there and adding stat events everywhere in your code will ultimately slow stuff down and make it appear slower than it actually is. So I hope that helps.